Here's a puzzle for you to ponder. I have the last issue of Newsweek magazine ever published, December 31st, 2012. Newsweek is no longer printing. Uh, it's effectively dead. Uh, they will try to uh, keep it alive, keep the brand alive uh, as a strictly internet publication. It remains to be seen how successful they will be. Newsweek uh, is a vehicle for advertising, as are all magazines. Uh, and uh, as you can see, the ads, here's a Toyota ad, the first, the, the uh, inside front cover uh, spread is uh, Toyota, Korean Air, Geico, Ally Bank, Jeep, Cymbalta, Cymbalta has three pages in here with lots of legal language about the drug. Ford Motor Company, Brenna and Brenna Law Firm. There's a vodka ad. You wouldn't see that ad on television, but all the other ads, uh, you could see those companies advertising on television. This is sort of like a paper version of television from an advertising perspective. The magazine has gotten so thin that it's, it's, the last issue really is an indication of how seriously in trouble this business has been and the reason why the business died. The cover price on here is $6.99, so I paid $7 just to have this little piece of history. And uh, the total page count is 80 pages. Now let's compare this to another magazine that was published a few months before that one. And that is Vogue magazine of September 2012. The largest Vogue magazine ever published, 916 pages. The cover price on Vogue is $5.99, so it's a, it cost me a dollar less to buy this magazine than the Newsweek. And if we look through Vogue at the advertising. It's all for companies that sell fashion, cosmetics, wearing apparel, shoes, photography in vogue is beautiful. And in fact, keep turning pages here looking for some kind of editorial content. There is some editorial content in Vogue and it's actually very, very well, beautifully written uh, and lots of interesting articles. People rarely read those articles. And so the question is why, why is Vogue thriving and Newsweek is dead.